So if you've ever been out fishing and you have all of the signs that there are fish around you, you've got birds, you've, you've found the bait, uh, maybe some slicks on the water, maybe you've even seen fish in the water, those redfish or, or flounder or trout running through the water, you can see them right next to you, but you just can't get them to bite. Yeah, well, that's what we're talking about today. We are going to discuss how to change that feeding bite into a reaction bite and how that's gonna help you catch more fish. What's up guys and welcome back today. We are talking about how to catch fish when those conditions aren't great and fish are just not feeding, they're not biting and how to get that reaction bite. All right, before we talk about how to get that reaction bite, we need to understand why fish are not biting, why they're not feeding. And there's a few reasons why, but the main two are the heat and the bait. Now, down here in Texas during the summer months, uh, it is pretty common for us to have 100 degree plus days pretty much all summer long. And because of that, uh, well, it's extremely hot outside, but also the water temperature is really, really high. And when the water temperature is high like that, you find fish feeding uh, a lot through the night in those cooler temperatures into the early morning, uh, generally before the sun comes up, and maybe a few hours after that during those feeding times. But after that, uh, you don't you don't see them feeding often throughout the day. It's just too hot. They're gonna go find cooler places to hang out. Uh, a lot of times they're really lethargic because of the heat and they're just, yeah. You've got a few hours during that feeding period and if you miss it, you've either gotta wait for the next feeding period during that day um, or you've gotta go find fish and get them to react to your bait another way. Secondly, is there's a ton of bait in the water. There is so much bait. I mean, we have shad, we have shrimp, we have croaker, we have mullet, and there is tons and tons of it. There is so much bait that it, it's it's actually hard sometimes to figure out what is just bait moving around in the water and what's actual predator fish that are chasing and feeding on these bait fish. There's just a ton. It is everywhere. Sometimes uh, when you're out on the boat or you're out on the kayak, there is bait all around you. And that potentially brings us to two problems. One, because there's so much bait, like I mentioned before, it's hard to pinpoint where you should be fishing because generally speaking, we want to find the bait and that's where we want to fish. But when it is everywhere, all around you, uh, you don't really have a guide to figure out exactly where you need to go um, and where you need to be casting. And yeah, uh, it's very, very difficult to pinpoint exactly where you should be fishing. Now, secondly, because there's so much bait in the water, a lot of these fish don't really need to bite your lure. Um, they have so many options to eat. They can kind of pick and choose whatever they want to. And because of that, they also get full really, really fast. A lot of times before the sun even comes up, those fish, you know, they're finished their feeding. They are full, they're lethargic. They have gorged out on all of this bait and then they're gone. So again, if you don't catch them in that feeding time, in that feeding window, chances are you're gonna have a rough day. So throughout most of the year, we are doing very, very specific things to find fish. We are looking for birds, we're looking for bait. We start looking at uh, lunar uh, activity and fish activity and we figure out tidal movements and all of that stuff. And we do that for a very specific reason. It's so that we can figure out when those feeding times are. Um, you put all of that information together and then you know exactly when fish should be feeding or, or around about time when they should be feeding. And you position yourself when those fish will be feeding and, and, and you find locations based on all of that. Now, in times like this, when fish get full well before you ever get there, um, and they're just not hungry because they have so much to choose from. Well, that's why we have to change the way that we view these fish and the way that we fish. Instead of uh, chasing this feeding bite, we need to start looking at how to get that reaction bite. All right, so how do you get that reaction bite? How do you draw those fish attention to bite your lure instead of all of the other options? How do you get them to bite when they're not hungry, when they're not feeding? So there's a few things that you can change pretty easily to increase your chances of getting that reaction bite. Uh, one is the movement in the water. 
Secondly is the visibility, and third is the sound. So how do you change movement in the water? Well, sometimes that just means changing the type of bait. All baits, they, they move differently through the water, and anything that's moving through the water is creating vibrations in the water that fish, they sense, they feel, they know that it's happening, they know that it's going on around them, and a lot of times that it attracts them in different ways. Um, that's the reason that paddle tails are so effective is because that paddle tail is flapping around so much and it's creating that movement and that movement attracts fish. Uh, and that's exactly what we want is we want to attract their attention. We want to get their attention. We want that attention to create that reaction that they, they have to go see what, what's going on. Uh, it's just curiosity. Now, sometimes just changing the speed in which you are retrieving your lure is enough to attract fish. If you're if you're retrieving at a certain speed and then you slow it down, well, that is staying in the water longer. Fish can see it longer. And, and a lot of times that is, that's enough to just gain their attention um, long enough for them to react and, and take a bite. Now, if that's not working and uh, then you're going to want to try to speed it up, speed it up much faster than you were before. Um, anything moving through the water at a higher rate of speed, it resembles something that is running, something that is frantic, that is you know, bait fish that are running from other things and it draws your attention. It's kind of like if you were, you know, walking down the street and you saw somebody run by really, really fast and they, they take off. Chances are you're going to try to look around and figure out what's going on. Why is this person running? Well, it's the same thing with fish. They're trying to figure out what's going on. It, it, it gains their curiosity. Maybe they're going to go chase that down and figure out, you know, just try to figure out what is going on in this situation. And sometimes that's enough to get that reaction bite. All right, secondly is visibility. Uh, visibility is probably the easiest thing to change because a lot of times that just means changing the lure that you have, changing the color. I did a video a few weeks ago on um, what colors you should be using in different types of water. If you haven't seen that, make sure you go check it out. I'll put a link above. Um, but if you are using, you know, uh, a certain, uh, let's say you're using a lighter colored lure, sometimes it's just a good idea to switch to something darker, something that, that creates a bigger profile in the water, um, something that fish can see a little bit easier. And, and sometimes that's all that you need, just change the color. If that doesn't work, maybe change to something brighter that, that draws their attention. Um, something that's flashy, something that has a lot of glitter that reflects light. All of those things are going to change the visibility in the water. Another option that you can do when you are using uh, paddle tail, soft plastics, any of that, is switch to a spinner bait, something that has one of those on there. Uh, this thing is going to spin around in the water. It's going to make a ton of movement and it's going to reflect light. Um, this is going to spin around. It's, uh, yeah, it's just a lot more visible. It's a lot easier to see. And a lot of times it just annoys the fish so much that they're, they've got to go check it out, see what's going on. And uh, when I'm having uh, rough days, when I'm struggling to catch fish, but I know that they're there, a lot of times I'll switch over to a spinner bait with a paddle tail on it, and that's enough. All right, now the last thing that you can do to attract fish and gain that reaction bite is to change the sound. Now they do make soft plastics and jig heads that have rattles in them, like uh, controlled descent lures. You can put the, the small little rattles in there. If that doesn't work, you can switch to a different lure like these or these. They both have um, different types of noise making devices inside those lures. Um, if that doesn't work, if you still want to use a paddle tail, um, one of the easiest ways to do that is just switch to a chatter weight. Throw that in line just above your uh, lure, makes a ton of noise. And honestly, all of these things, they are made to attract fish. That sound is supposed to attract fish. It's supposed to get their attention and um, it just makes them curious. They come over, they they are checking out the sound and they see your lure and then that's when they bite. Um, the last option is to switch to a popping cork. Now, if you watched many of my videos in the past, chances are you've seen me use this because I use it a lot. Um, popping corks I use to locate fish when I'm struggling to find them, but I also use it when I'm struggling to catch them because it makes a ton of noise. It is going to attract fish. It's going to bring fish nearby. Um, sometimes throwing this in is enough to make them try to move and at least I can find out where they are and start fishing that way. Um, but it's also super visible when this is floating in the water and you're using this uh, properly. It's really easy to see when uh, a fish bites this, uh, you're, you know, it, it's a lot easier to hook up on them when fish aren't super, super active. This helps a ton. I 
use popping corks all the time. All right, and the last thing is, if you are still struggling to catch fish, uh, even if you know they're there, none of these things are working. You change the sound, you change the visibility, you change the movement, you, you change colors, you've done all of that, and none of it is working. Maybe it's just time to change locations. Um, maybe it's time to go somewhere else. Maybe it's time to target a different species of fish. Uh, if you're you know, targeting a redfish and you're out in the marsh and you're doing all of that, maybe it's a good idea to just switch the fish that you're targeting, switch over to uh, chasing trout, go into some deeper water. Maybe you'll have better luck that way. Regardless, I've said it many times, if you're not catching fish, change something, change what you're doing. Um, and this is a good place to start. All right guys, well, I hope this video helped uh, with some tips on how to catch fish on those slow days when fish just aren't biting, how, how to get those reaction bites. Um, if you liked the video, please subscribe, like, and comment below. Tell me what your favorite techniques are for catching fish on those slow days. But thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. And we'll see you next time.